I tell you that story about in um, in Germany. Went to that freaking bar called the Stockel, where where the skinhead was in it. Skinhead. Did okay. I tell you that story? Does no, that thing sound sorry. familiar? So uh, I was with this unit dude, Kevin, and we went to this. We were in Bonn, Germany, and we went to this bar. It was underground called the Stockel. It was a cool, very old built. It was just a cool bar. Cool. Yep. And as soon as we went and walked in, it was very small. You know, it was, wasn't as big as the, as O'Donnell's. Right. Uh, I bellied up to the bar and it got quiet. You know, people realized that because this is a local place. And Kevin and I ordered a beer and we're drinking. And uh, I looked down the bar and there's a dude I fucking me. I mean, like giving me the whale eye. Uh, and I look him up and down and he's a big guy. He's taller than I am. He's he's a big guy and he is 100% in his skinhead uniform. I'm talking the cutoff sleeves, the tattoos, the bald, the shaved head, the boots, the jack boots with the white laces. Oh gosh. Yep. All that shit. So he's got the full freaking uniform on and he starts like talking shit about us because we're Americans because he heard me talking to Kevin didn't know that I speak German. So he's talking shit about us to the bartender. And I told him about Deutsch. I said, Hey, let me, let me buy you a beer because I just wanted to diffuse shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause he was already being aggressive. Right. So I bought him a beer and, um, he asked me if I would like, are, are you a fighter? You know, he started sizing me up. <laughs> he starts doing air combatives, you know? Like showing off to me his kung fu, pop, 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 pop. like throwing punches in the air and kicks and everything, and they're getting close to my face. And the guy I'm with, Kevin, says, "Hey, man, leave him alone." And this guy gets in Kevin's shit, <laughs> and I told him, "Hey, man, leave him alone." Kevin was nervous, and Kevin was a bad motherfucker, but you could tell he was nervous. So I tell this freaking dude out uh, in Do- out Deutsch, I said, "Eris gefährlich, gefährlich. He's dangerous." I'm, I keep trying to defuse it, and the guy keeps escalating and escalating. And I look at the bartender, and the bartender tells me, hey, leave him alone. He is dangerous. He's a, he's a very dangerous man. I'm like, all right, fuck. You know, I could already feel it now. Now this shit's escalating more and more. It keeps going on and on and on. He's doing more and more air kicks and, and air katas. And Kevin looks at me and he goes, hey, why don't you, um, why don't you take, why don't you talk to him outside? I said, good idea. <laughs> so and the bartender's going, no, no, no. Side dog for safety. Be, be careful. Be careful. Side dog for safety. And I'm like, Dirr. so I walk out first. I say, hey, let's go outside and chit chat. And I'm just calm. I'm not angry. I'm very calm about it. Go outside. And this, this guy is, I mean, like I said, he's big. He's 6'2". You know, he's a big freaking guy. And um, he's looking at me like easy game. Mm-hmm. Um, so we go outside and it's a nice quiet night. Nobody's on the street. It's a cobblestone street. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very German. It's an old town part of Bonn. And I go right into my boom and he walks, he right fist clenched flaring and walks right into my zone, walks right into my space. And I freaking bam, I crack him. And that too just freaking detonated his face, you know, detonated. Hmm. My fist went into his mouth and I cut my hand on his teeth. I still have a scar there. Hmm. And he hit the deck so freaking fast. And now he's speaking perfect English. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not mean anything. I'm sorry. (laughs) And uh, I said, get up and go. And I kicked him in his ass while he's just insult to injury, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you're down. I'm not going to freaking punch you while you're on the ground. And we go back down into the bar and go right back to our beers. And the bartender's looking at us like, how did you do that? And he sees my bloody hand and he gives me a napkin. He's like, oh, my God. I can't believe you survived that, dude. He was so dangerous. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but you know, it's funny because anybody who starts a fight, typically, they don't know how to fight. Oh, if you're throwing kicks in the air at a bar. Right. Yep. Yep. A fighter isn't going to start a fight. Man, no. You know? That's a great story. I like the way that it's, it st- you know, because all I did was diffuse the whole time. Mm-hmm. I tried to de-escalate, de-escalate, bottom of beer because I saw, as soon as I walked in, he sized me up. As soon as I walked in, 
because he was the bar tough guy. That was his yeah. turf, you know, and he saw he I guess he saw me as somebody challenging his space. You know, oh, here comes another freaking tough guy. Let's see how tough he is. I'm going to freaking challenge him and, blah, 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 and intimidate the hell out of him. I would intimidate him freaking place, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, now we'll reinvent. <laughs> he needed to establish his dominance and he picked the wrong guy to establish it too. This is going to be a YouTube clip. I can already tell you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On. Good, good, yeah. good. Yeah. That's a great, perfect for YouTube, man. Yep. Yep. 